So, functions. Does anybody here know Lisp or Scheme? So basically, when you have a, a scheme, scheme is a, it's, you know, or Lisp, it's like scheme is like a subset. Uh, it's an it's a bit of a weird thing, yeah. Like you don't have you you have all these parentheses and whatever. It's super weird when you use it, but they have something that is every function is an anonymous function. Every function is a lambda. The thing is, if you can name it or not. So if you want, you can just go like, I don't remember exactly how it was, but I think it was something like this. Um, yeah, it was, it was something like weird, like this, right? So it's like, you're defining, maybe, or maybe it was like this, func, and then maybe it's like this. So it's like, the function is just plus free, uh, free two, it returns that, but you just go, I want to define func as this, because everything else is an anon everything is an anonymous function. And basically here, this con the context is the same. So when you want to define a function, like we've seen, uh, or, or let's put it this way, an anonymous function is whoopa, arguments, right? And then you just go print right? This is an anonymous function, and I think we need to put this here because, it, you know, let's just double check. But yeah, it complains because it's expecting here this. This is an anonymous function. And we run and nothing happens, right? Because we're not calling this function, we define something that just got lost, right? So when you want to define a function, you just give it the name, right? And you go the same way that we define stuff, and now we see that this is, um, you know, you're defining a constant, right? You're defining a constant that is this anonymous function, right? It just makes sense. So here, let's just go print named function, right? And then we can just call that by the name, right? And that makes sense. If you want to pass arguments, you just go uh, the name and again it's the same way that you define these things right and this is something that I really don't like in, in C++ and some of these languages that when you're defining a lambda versus a different versus a normal function the syntax is different it's it, it's it's super weird. It's one of those things that if I don't use C++ for a while, every time I go back into C++, I have to check how the hell do I do a lambda. It's so annoying. And here it's just, it's the same. It just doesn't make a difference. So you go here and you go, um, you know, and you can print the, and you can print the, um, the A, right? This thing just works. Now we have to pass in this function an A to print, right? Uh, an int, sorry. And it works. And then you have, okay, but I want to return something. And the way we have we've been doing so far, we've, we've been doing basically this, right? We've been omitting the return type, but this is what this is. This is a function that receives an int, and I, I think he wants them to call them procedures because function is whatever, I don't care. For me, they're just functions, functions. So this is just a function that returns void, okay? Because uh, I think that he said something like function functions need to have an, a transformation, return a transformation or something like that. I don't know. Like uh, the, co the, the, the mathematical definition of function. So here, you know, if we want to do something like this, right, we just go, I want to return an int. Uh, let's say I want to return a again. And so you can just go, yeah, and it's the same. Or and you can have here, you know, the variable, right? So this is equal to whatever f returns and then you can just go print right e Ugh. and this works right makes sense this class this uh, language does not have types by reference nor out variables. 
So it means that you know you're not allowed to just pass arguments through the function header and get them back, right? Well, you can do pointers, right? But you don't have the concept of passing something by reference and changing it. So what this function has is multiple return types. Hmm? If I'm not mistaken with the syntax. So now I can just go oof, b and c equal this. And let's just print b, c. Makes sense, right? Um, what else makes sense here? Let me see, let me see, let me see. So let's go with something. Well, I haven't touched on this yet, yeah? But we're doing this, right? And I told you, like, oh, you're creating a constant that is something, right? And this is important for the next thing that is coming. This is being when you say when you say this, right? The compiler is figuring out, oh, this is a free, okay, so the type that you want here is, well, you know, the S64, great. So what's happening here is that this, right, and I'm not going, well, I can just do it here. This is basically just synthetic sugar, right, to help you, but in fact, what you have is the same as you would if you had written this. f is a function that receives an int, returns two ints. It's just that this doesn't, you know, it's just, it's constant, the, 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 um, the compiler can figure it out, so we don't need to put it, but again, it just makes sense, right? And I think here you don't need to put it like this, but you need to put it like that whenever Oh no, actually you do. Because the problem is that then it tries to think that you know, you're know you passing something else. So you need to kind of make sense. No, this is like a thing, right? But it just makes sense. So if you want a function, okay? If you want a function. So now let's just, for the sake of argument, make this simpler. So you have a function that receives just an int. And let's just say that goes like, Opa. That's it. Right. Then, if you want to have another function that receives as an argument a function, right? So you go like, well, let's just call it x. That is a function that receives an int. can just go x, uh, sorry, uh, h of g, it's just, it's just simple, it just is less friction, this is what this language for me is, it's, it's like, this language, that's why it's fun to work with this, because it's just so little friction, it's just so easy to do stuff, and to remember, once you know how functions work, they work always the same, right? It, it's it's just I don't know I don't know what else to say this is just really good stuff really good stuff and the same thing right I could put this here right I could put this here and then you need to pass that and it but it just works the same it's the exact same thing it's really really good so there's a few more things that I wanted to talk about uh, functions we're almost there, guys. We're almost to the struts. Um, so let's go to level two. We're leveling up. So, so far, we've been, you know, I've been doing this stuff on purpose. I've been writing this stuff so that, you know, I wouldn't in add something weird. But this uh, language has something that you can just go that is like print variable 
this is a function this is a, a function that's going to receive uh, well it's a function yeah and there's this special type in the language that is any so you just say this is of type any and basically this is just something that will encapsulate uh, whatever you have there right so whatever you pass it right it's like it's like a box pointer let's say in, in, in C++ in C sharp so you can just go value and the type that I'm passing and so when I'm going here to opa when I'm going to to pass here here I have to pass like the the type I cannot go like type of a because if I go type of a it's going to give me any it's an any so you need to kind of grab you know because that type that it carries is the um, it's a pointer so if I just go now print variable uh, you know, 10 right it's going to it's printing the values 10 right and then it's just showing us here what's the information right but I can then go print Right, I can just go print a low, and it just you know oh it's a string and there's a low right. But this is like something that has extra runtime cost right. So one of the things that people love about C++ is templates, and templates are really cool because basically what happens is that it just gets compiled down into the specifics that you use it right. So it's really let's say efficient. The problem is that. People use like templates in just such horrible ways. It's just so oh, it's sometimes it's so frustrating to work with them because you like something happens and then you look at that message and you're like oh, and then you need to focus to try to see oof where where is this okay oh okay okay and you just follow follow that trail. So let's see how templates are here. So you can have the same thing. All right, print variable. It's a function, but you're just going to say, okay, I want to pass something, and this something is of something unknown. This is the, the dollar thing. So I don't know what this is, and then the whenever it's going to be used, you're going to to figure it out, right? So here now we're just going to go T, and now here it we're already going to have that thing, so we can go type. Opa. In fact, we don't need to go type of T because we have T there, right? So we can just print T. Um, so whenever we use this, right, this is going to be like visually, it's the same thing as the previous one, but code-wise, it's not. Right. This so this is just templating. It's when when it goes through this, it's going to then generate code specific for this function. And when you jump, you jump to that function. When you go here, there's different code, and it jumps to that function. And basically, that's it, right? Templates. How the templates were with um, with other things, right? Um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. If you have any questions just let me know and just be warned I may not know the answers so I wanted to talk about another example that is because a lot of times when we want to do something right we want to have we don't know how many arguments we want we want to be able to pass multiple arguments right and this language has that too so you can just go args and it's of type uh, int but it's a variable array int and this is what it is and it's not a variable array it's a variable number of arguments that you're going to pass right uh, so here we're just going to go for args and then we're going to just print um, so here we just go id index id right we don't pros with this stuff by now so now if I just go print variables I can go 10 20 30 and it just works right now in a lot of languages what happens is that like you want oh you know what I want to pass more arguments right 
So the way it works is you need to define it up front what are the arguments that are fixed and then what are the variable arguments, right? So you just go here and let's say that just before and I want before to be a string that I pass. And so then when you're calling, you can just go like print, uh, let's say, yeah, something like this, just for the sake of argument. And so here now I'm going to have to pass, you know, whatever, right? But then you realize, you know, it would be cool that I also have the curly braces, right? It's it's nice to have that curly braces, but most of them you have to define it at the front, but not on this language. You can just go at the end after something. You can always put something. The caveat is that it needs to have a default value which, by the way, functions also support. You can also have default parameters, right? So, if I'm not mistaken, this will just work. Oh, well, it would be nice to print something. Well, it would be nice to print something. Okay, and now it's giving us this error. So the problem is that because of the way this works, at least for now, you're going to have to go the after is equal to this. Like you basically need to tell it where does this variable argument ends, right? And um, oh, one more thing also that um, a lot of times so you would have a function like this, right? But you want to pass an array. So let's say that you have like already an array. Um, let's say whatever. Um, let's go. Right, so you, and you want to pass this to a function that receives variable arguments and you can do it this way you can just go you know what use b but basically as a, a variable argument thing and this from what he said is basically a no cost operation basically the, the compiler just knows that here okay i'm just going to grab from this point of memory to this point of memory and pass this as the the arguments so that's pretty cool too it's pretty useful that you don't have to then define a function that receives uh, for example, uh, an, an, an array or an array view, because if you do a view, you can pass a static array or, or a dynamic array, so you don't have to do that kind of stuff. So that's pretty useful. Uh, and then we're going to level three, last thing, and the, here it's about what Spirefka was, was asking. So about stuff that is, um, you know, what can you do with the functions? And some of these things I don't know for sure, some of them, I, I just know these, there may be more, there may be different things, I don't know. So one of them is that when you define, for example, a function, you can say that, um, you can say that this function, it changed, it's bad, so you can just go, it's deprecated, and you can put here a message, if you don't put anything, nothing will happen. Um, uh, nothing will happen in the sense there, there's going to be no no specific message, but there's going to be no, this no note, I guess. But if you put it, uh, it's, it's going to write there, and you have like the warning, right, that the is, uh, is deprecated, but it's still, it works, right? It didn't crash, right? It doesn't, uh, right? Uh, like the code is still executed. So this is one. Uh, the other thing is, that let's say you have a function and you'll see this a lot in their functions uh, like math functions for example and you just have an something that is like an int that needs to receive an int and it returns um, whatever and it returns an int right so you can just go like i times i whatever so by default you can just go this right and this is just works right well I'm going to just remove this guy because it's going to be annoying uh, 
So it just works, there's nothing that's going to happen. But if you go here, if you go uh, hashtag must, then when you try to do this, it doesn't allow you. It's going to say an error because you're not, you're ignoring the return value. So for this to, to run, you actually need to assign it to something or it doesn't compile. Right, so this is uh, another uh, interesting one. Um, oh, and then there's one that is. Remember when we were talking about the um, the arrays, we had this thing that you could just go. Um, so let's say you would define an array, right? And this array would just be. Um, let's put here. So one, two, three. And then let's say that you go, oh, I want to print B3, uh, right? Which is invalid. Right, so when you run this, it's going to give you an error on compilation saying, look, you have something that is defined as this size, you're trying to access, uh, oh, no, no, no. It's, I'm not even reading what I'm doing. You're trying to access something that has free elements, but you're trying to get, you know, index free, so it doesn't work. And this is cool, it helps you develop and all that stuff, but this has a cost. Because every time you're putting, uh, but again, keep in mind, this is a language that is built on the concept of you're going to squeeze as much as possible out of this. This is going to be C performance levels, okay? Uh, and it, this has a cost because every time you're going to be indexing something, it's going to be checking, okay, is this inside the index, inside the, the range, right? Does it make sense, right? So there's something that you can just put, and as far as I know, you can only define it on, on scopes or functions, right? I'm not sure if you can define it just anywhere, but you can just go, I want no uh, array boundary checking, I think that's what it is. So I want no array boundary checking. So now when you go like this, what did I do? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Is it, why is this happening? It shouldn't, that's weird. So let's go. Is it because it's these guys? Could it be? So let's try this. So what if this is a variable? No. What if it's a view? <laughs> okay. So I guess, hmm, I need to ask him, because in theory, unless it's because, unless he, he has something that, if you have something that is constant, I will not allow you to do it always, right? But, um, because, yeah, because it makes sense, right? Because if it's constant, then you know, always at compile time, that you're accessing out. So it's not, there's no runtime check, you just skip the runtime check, you just do it on compile time. So that it makes sense. So basically here, what's happening is just, we're accessing something that is outside of that range, right? And in this case, it didn't break or whatever. It has one, whatever reason. But again, this is something that is very interesting because you can do this kind of stuff. And then something that you mentioned that is also pretty cool is that then when you're building, you can have, um, how do you say, uh, like a building options that you can say, look, I want that by default, there's no checking, right? The pro so then you can have, you know, you can just have your code like this and everything will like, you know, give you information that something is, is happening and you can find these errors and whatever, but then you can say, okay, the build at the moment is ready to ship. I'm just going to strip these checks so that it's faster. But also, right, because the problem is that, well, but what if somebody put here this, right? So there's a mode that has on, off, and there's a mode that is always. And he calls it like the paranoid mode. And I think that 
once you've coded, <laughs> you always get into that place that you're paranoid. You don't trust anything, right? You don't trust the machine, you don't trust the, the, the debugger, you don't trust anything. So that will f ignore all these things and always enforce on. So that's also pretty cool. So if you're you know in a jam and you want to really figure out what's going on, you can always force that in that uh, build parameter. So that's pretty good. And this covers functions. And now I was going to complex types, unless you guys have any questions. Questions? 